You started it, I'm sure. Did I? I'm sure. I don't remember starting it. I know that it started and it just kind of stuck. I yeah. think we we took a bit longer than I think a lot of couples do to say I love you. I know for a hot minute, we kind of told each other like, I like you. And I think that kind of turned into like, I like you, you're my favorite. And then that turned into my favorite. Yeah. You're my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> When Jillian asked me to do this mandatory speech, I told her I'd be happy to. I had no idea what to say, uh, so I Googled it. Evidently, you're supposed to welcome everyone, introduce yourself. My name is Jim. I am the father of the groom. The last thing they said is, talk about how they met. Well, I don't know. So I'm going to talk about how I met Jillian. Travis brought her to town, and we went out to eat, and I was a little shocked. How did this charming, intelligent, beautiful, polite, successful young lady get mixed up with my son? As the evening went on, the dinner went on, and I thought about it and thought about it and thought about it, it became clear to me. Because sometime when I wasn't looking or paying attention, my son had become a handsome, intelligent, polite, charming, successful young man. At that point, I thought this is a pretty good couple. When I first met Travis, you know, Jill said, you know, I'm dating this guy and, he, you know, I want you to meet him. So we went out to dinner one night. A couple days after we had dinner, uh, I happened to be with Nathan, my son, and I just commented that Travis seemed okay. And Nathan looked me straight in the eye and he says, Dad, really? Travis is an intense gearhead engineer. Jill's dating your clone. Of course you like him. <laughs> I'm not sure, Travis, but I'm hoping that he meant that as a, you know, compliment. I'll take it. I'll take it. Jill has been able to flower and accomplish things in her life that she would have never been able to do without Travis sharing her life. I was always concerned, knowing that Travis rode motorcycles, that I would get this phone call that they were both in an accident. You know, dad's minds go there. They came to the house the first time and she started taking off all this body armor. I said, man, that seems like a lot of hardware. And she goes, it's Travis's rule, all the gear, all the time. At that point, I knew my little girl was in good hands. Jill's friend since junior high. And in looking back, I really couldn't tell you how the two of us became friends at all. <laughs> because we were phenomenally different people. She went to art school, and I got STEM degrees in computer technology and pharmacy. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Kashak, as of last week, she's a doctor. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I think she knows literally every person in Columbus here. Whereas I'm the kind of introvert that would never leave my house if I could get away with it. <laughs> and she's the kind of efficient, organized person that could run an event planning business and just thrive at it. Whereas I'm the kind of procrastinator that wrote this two days ago. <laughs> but in spite of all these things, we became very best of friends. And she became the woman that I fondly refer to as my wife. But not so long ago, Jill went on a date, a really, really long date. <laughs> And sometime shortly after that, she told me, Mel, I think I met boy you. First date, eight hours long. It was eight hours long. Start, started at a winery, went to a bar, went to a movie. No, oh my God, you're missing like half of it. I was pretty drunk by then. <laughs> 
we had been talking for several weeks, like yeah. texting and that kind of stuff. We were struggling to find a time to go on our first date. So Trav finally said, I'm just going to take a half day of work and come pick you up. So it was like a Wednesday and we went to Easley and yep. we did a winery tour and then we got to the tap at City Market and our oldest standing inside joke is over the City Market from our very first date. Yeah, she said she didn't think the city market was on Market Street. <laughs> and I assured her that the city market was on Market Street. <laughs> you cannot rely on her for navigation. <laughs> so, we eventually made it to City Market, had beers there. We went and we walked the entire Indianapolis Canal. And then you took me back to my apartment. And yep. I kissed you first. Yep. I'm not shy. No one, no one has ever accused me of being shy. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, your parents always say, don't talk to people on the internet. That's a big point of how all these friends came to be. At some point or another, everyone liked cars. And some of us still have a Volkswagen. We have our amazing trip in August where we all go to Tennessee. Our entire group of the South, some of the North guys, some of the Texas people. I mean, when you have a thing that goes for, I think we're on year 13 now, you, you find this click of people. And then one year she showed up with Travis. I, I may be of more words, but he likes cars. He likes bikes. It's surreal to me that Ted is here always the life of the party always has a story hence he's officiating it's always fun putting these together because there's a it's balancing it between a truly heartfelt message to two people you care about in front of their entire family and friends and also a little bit of a roast at the same time because you've been through so many ridiculous things together it's a lot of fun I met Trav for a really long time and I surmise that's because we're both introverts <laughs> and neither one of us wanted to commit to meeting somewhere and doing something. <laughs> and when we did finally meet, we probably didn't say more than a handful of words to each other. Really, I would say I didn't get to know Trav through conversations and that's okay. <laughs> but that being said, it took me a really, really long time to figure out how is it that Jill thinks that she has boy Mallory on her hands. And I really, I, I got this maybe a month ago. It kind of just like hit me all at once. Because I wasn't looking at the conversations or our shared interests, I was looking at your actions throughout your relationship together. So Jill took on a lot of completely new roles. And some of them were great fits and some of them were incredibly challenging. And then finally she was brave enough and bold enough to take a chance and open her own business. And she's been just phenomenally successful in that. And through all these things, Travis loved her and celebrated her successes when it needed to be celebrated. He supported her and told her that her happiness and sanity were far more important than the money she would make and jobs that made her miserable. <laughs> and he was one of the people who told her to take that risk and gamble on being bold with Rainworthy. Since Travis came into her life, I've watched Jill work hard and be successful, grow and mature and become the kind of woman that I admire and that inspires greatness in other people, myself included. I know she did this through the love and support from you, Travis. And I know that that's the same love and support that I have always had for you. Plus, Travis likes to give her crap here and then, just to keep her honest, and I fully support that. <laughs> Yeah, 
marriage is pretty simple for the husband. Smile and nod. Smile and nod. It's what you do. It's simple. It's easy. I'm passing it along to Travis. Smile and nod. What Jillian needs to know is he's not going to smile and nod just to keep you happy. <laughs> he's going to smile and nod because he truly wants you to be happy. And the hard part in a marriage is what the wife has to do. She has to figure a way to make him really want to smile and nod. <laughs> if he wants you happy, you want him happy. That's the secret long, happy, successful marriage. Twenty-four hours from now, I'll be able to say to Travis what fathers have said forever. Congratulations. I'm proud of you. You have chosen wisely. And to Jillian, I'll be able to say congratulations. Welcome to our family. You have chosen wisely. <laughs> but to the new Mrs. Zilch, I'll be able to say one thing that I have been waiting a long time to say. It's something my friends say to me from time to time. What up, Jay-Z? We just want to say thanks everybody for coming. It's kind of surreal to see families and friends all in the same place. Our family has been instrumental in all of this happening, both families, Trav's family and my family. So we just have some thank you gifts that we're going to hand out real quick to those of you that have put up with the crazy. I recognize it's been crazy for 18 months. <laughs> so 18 months, 18 very short months. <laughs> But tomorrow, I promise, the crazy ends. <laughs> um, we love all of you, you big jerks. So this is a point where the best man might tell a story where his brother asked him to be his best man in his wedding. Well, <laughs> Travis, Travis never actually asked me to be his best man for this wedding. And I'm sure some of my family especially are going, well, that's Trav. And I've heard Jillian say it too. Um, only I don't know if she's realized that she just signed up for a lifetime of saying, well, that's Trav. The fact of the matter is, Travis didn't have to ask me to be his best man. That's just the kind of relationship he and I have. We've always had each other's backs, we'll always have each other's backs. And I just want to say that I'm super proud of you, proud of both of you, I'm proud to have stood next to you guys today. And uh, congratulations to both of you. I love you. Lord in heaven, we thank you for these two children of ours and for this new marriage that they are creating here today. Dear Father in heaven, I ask your blessing upon this marriage of Julian and Travis. May they always cherish and respect each other. May they always be each other's favorite. If they do so, then they will succeed where most of us have failed. I ask these things of you, our Father in heaven, in the name of your child, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Honey, 
days, I remember how we started talking. I remember our first date. I remember that I kissed you first, and from there, let me think I was in charge. Ha. I remember knowing the second I was in love with you. In 60 years, I will remember this day when I promised you my life and my heart. From the moment I wake up to the moment we go to bed, you're my in-between. Between everyday work and everyday stress, I will use every day to remind you how much I love you. I will protect your feelings and your needs, even when that means you need a new motorcycle. <laughs> You're my favorite, and everything about you will forever be my favorite. You're my favorite laugh, my favorite person, my favorite part of each day. My favorite memories and my favorite future plans. You're my favorite place to go when my mind searches for peace. Our love story is and always will be my favorite. I will love you until my last living breath in this world and then will love you after that. Thank you for choosing me as your wife, Miss Jillian Zilch. <sighs> Dear Jillian, it's only taken me five years, six months, and 24 days to come up with the words to tell you how much you mean to me. Your charisma, character, determination, your smile, your laugh, sense of humor, your ability to just get me. You really are the perfect woman. I knew very early on that you were someone special and I couldn't be happier to marry you and spend the rest of my life with you together. To be cliche, you complete me. There's not a person on this earth that I would call my favorite other than you. Love, Travis. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful day to celebrate the union of Travis and Jillian. Jillian asked me to open with, and in her words, something nice about marriage and how great it is. And we will get to that. But first, let's talk about why marriage is hard and sometimes a real pain in the ass. There are going to be times, as soon as this evening, that your partner will drive you crazy. You will question your judgment that you've made the right choice and whether or not you can make it through another day of this crazy idea that we call marriage. But this is where I can say something nice about marriage and how great it is. In between those rare times when you're ready to end each other, you get to spend the rest of your life with your best friend. I'm not going to stand here and tell you that every day will be easy or that you'll never go to bed plotting how to best hide a body. But. I will tell you that today is only a glimmer of the bright light that will be our lives together from this day forward. Beyond this team of two though is everyone sitting behind you and those who couldn't be here today. We're here with our shoulders to be cried on, our bottles of wine ready to be uncorked and vented over, our glasses of beer to be raised and talked through. We're here for you not only for today but for your entire lives together. Not just to share booze with though you know who you invited and it's kind of a theme. In addition to saying a few nice things about marriage, Jillian and Travis asked me to say a few nice things about them. And this one I really struggled with. <laughs> How could I possibly limit it to only a few things? I've known Jillian for about 12 years now. The tone of our relationship was set early as I used my many years of experience to help hide her and her Mike's Hard Lemonade from the New Jersey State Police. <laughs> Now, Travis, I haven't known you nearly as long, but I knew from the beginning there was something different about you. Jillian messaged me one day and told me she was seeing some guy that rode motorcycles. Knowing her track record, I was immediately concerned for her life. But then, she told me that you wouldn't let her ride with you unless she was properly protected and that you had already made sure she had all the gear she needed to be safe. As someone that rides myself, that immediately spoke volumes to me about your character and how you felt about Jillian. Then, one day she messaged me and told me that you're going to be in Baltimore and that I should go have a beer with you. 
No, let's be frank. This isn't the first time I've been set up on a date with a dude in a bar. So, I of course agreed. From the moment we started talking, it felt like I was hanging out with an old buddy. Not just some guy that was trying to impress me to further his cause with my friend. It didn't hurt getting into my good graces that you also had really good taste in beer and motorcycles. But from that day forward, you've proven to be a strong character, a great friend, and a stoic companion to Jillian. So to both of you, thank you for the many years of friendship and the privilege of being a part of your lives. Look at one another and remember this moment. Before this moment, you have been many things to one another. Acquaintance, friend, companion, lover, and even teacher. Now you shall say a few words that take you across the threshold of life. For after these vows, you shall say to the world, this is my husband and this is my wife. I, Travis, take you, Jillian, to be my wife. I, Jillian, take you, Travis, to be my husband. And these things I promise you. I will be faithful to you and honest to you. I will respect, trust, help, and care for you. I will respect, trust, help, and care for you. I will share my life with you. I will forgive you as we have been forgiven. I will try with you to better understand ourselves. I will try with you to better understand ourselves. The world and God. The world and God. Through the best and worst of what is to come. Through the best and the worst of what is to come. As long as we will live. And as long as we live. And now, with these vows and these rings, with the power vested in me by the internet, I have the pleasure to pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss your bride. To you, Trev. I could not have imagined a better partner to hand off my life. <laughs> to the both of you, I am so profoundly happy that you two found each other, and I wish you all the love and joy in the world. Cheers. Cheers. To Travis and Jillian. Yeah. <laughs>